So here we go. Israel is going full speed ahead in their efforts to become a rogue pariah state, if they're not already that. So the New York Times explains here, Undeterred by a resounding 14-0 to zero defeat at the United Nations, Israel's government said Monday that it would move ahead with thousands of new homes in East Jerusalem and warned nations against further action, declaring that Israel does not, quote, turn the other cheek. Just a few days after the United Nations Security Council voted to condemn Israeli settlements, Jerusalem's municipal government signaled that it would not back down. The city intends to approve 600 housing units in the predominantly Palestinian eastern section of town on Wednesday in what a top official called a first installment of 5,600 new homes. Wow. So in other words, they are proving the point of the United Nations. They are proving the point of the Security Council. All they said was, hey man, you're being a rogue state. You need to abide by international law. You need to stop doing occupation and apartheid. You need to stop taking more and more Palestinian lands and building more and more illegal settlements. All they're saying is, hey Israel, follow the law. And it was a toothless resolution. It was just, it, again, I, I mentioned this yesterday, but the argument is, Hey, I'm just saying, like, that's what the resolution is. I'm just saying, maybe you should follow international law. They were so outraged by that, that you would think the international community had literally declared war on Israel. But today we actually learned that uh, Israel, Netanyahu told uh, New Zealand behind the scenes, hey, if you're in favor of this, we consider it a declaration of war. What? So when they say, hey, you should follow international law, how dare you say that? Now I think you declared war on me. Yeah, Netanyahu, that's like New Zealand really fired a shot at somebody in the IDF's face. How stupid are you? I mean, like a fucking crybaby, man. It's unbelievable the way that this guy acts. And then, so hold on, if that's a declaration of war, if it's a declaration of war for New Zealand to say, hey, you should follow international law, then how are the Palestinians supposed to take it when you keep stealing more and more of their land? Is that not a declaration of war? No, it's cool. Sit back, relax, take it easy. I'm just going to keep taking your land and keep doing settlements. So wouldn't they, according to your own logic, wouldn't they be totally in the right to respond militarily, to respond with force? Because it's self-defense. You de you're declaring war on them, you're stealing more and more of their land. No, that's not a declaration of war, what Israel does to Palestine, but it is a declaration of war when New Zealand says to Israel, hey man, just follow international law. When the UN says, hey dude, come on, just stop being a dick. Now they say, no, we're gonna prove you right. And by the way, all the fucking... Remember during the Iraq war when they kept moving the goalposts? So first it was Saddam Hussein did 9-11. And then it was, okay, no, he didn't do 9-11, but um, he has weapons of mass destruction. And then it was, okay, that's not true either, he's just a bad guy. And then what was, what was the final argument they made? The final argument was, he violated international law. He violated international law, what are we going to do? And he keeps, he's snubbing his nose at the international community. So obviously, obviously... America needs to go in there and do an invasion, and, and I think the region is ripe for regime change. This is what they said. This is not my position. This is the government's position. That's what they said. That's what they did. So why is it not the same for Netanyahu? Why is it not the same for Israel? He, he keeps violating international law. Look, what are we going to do? We gave him a million opportunities. He keeps violating international law. And now the UN was crystal clear, 14 to 0 vote, stop building settlements. This is a, a disgusting, flagrant, overt, blatant violation of international law. You have to stop it. And even after that, the final warning, what does he do? He goes, thank you. Now I'm going to speed up with it. So according to the logic of the US, this is a rogue pariah state. This is a terror state. And they're ripe for regime change. Except they're not going to say that, and that's not going to happen, because they're our allies, so... They can largely get away with whatever they want to get away with. And again, if you're so outraged at how dare the U.S. do this, we are so angry at you. Then return the $38 billion we just gave you, bitch. What do you, what do you, wait, you don't have to take that. You're so mad at us, we're so bad, we're so evil, we're so anti-Semitic, the international community, everybody in every country obviously hates Jews so much, that why would you accept anything from us? Go ahead, give back the $38 billion, give back the military aid, give back Iron Dome, but you're not going to do that. 
You're not going to do that. It's time for the U.S. to get tough. You think this is tough? This ain't tough. This is the bare minimum you could do. All you're doing is acknowledging that they're violating international law here. That's it. So what you should do, and this is why Obama had to do this earlier, man. See, he waited till the end to do a symbolic gesture, and I'm out. Okay, put me on the record. I, I'm not totally callous towards the Palestinians, and I'm out. But see, now you get Netanyahu's response, and Netanyahu's going, Oh, you want to play that game? Fine. And then he's now building more settlements. Imagine Obama did this in his first term. Then what? Well, then he has leverage. Then he can say, hey, I'm not going to give you billions of dollars in aid. How about that? Hey, maybe I do sanctions on your ass. How about that? Hey, maybe we vocally support BDS. Maybe we propose a resolution not just saying you're violating international law, but saying we are in favor of a Palestinian state at the UN. If Obama did this earlier, he could have done those things, but he didn't do it earlier, and my guess is because he didn't want to go that far. He wanted to do, he wanted to do the symbolic gesture and say, I'm not totally callous against Palestinians, and then move along. And by the way, there's a lot of misinformation about this too. How many resolutions did Obama do that were critical of Israel? One. How many? George Bush, I think, did six. There was uh, either six or nine in the past few presidents, even Republican presidents. They did resolutions that were more critical of Israel. Because in recent times, criticism of Israel is now, oh, forget it. I mean, it's like, a, it's basically like a fundamentalist religion where if you criticize it, oh, blasphemy. That's what that is. How nobody criticizes them. And then they use the same tire arguments. Only democracy in the Middle East. Only democracy in the Middle East. And they say that as if, like, it's such a smear hack argument because they're trying to imply that that's why you don't like them. You don't like them because they're a democracy. That's your problem is that you're just a fascist and that they're democratic and you don't like them because they're democratic. Or, again, the other argument is liberal values. You don't like them because they abide by liberal values. I don't know why you do that. Maybe you just hate Jews. Maybe it's anti-Semitism. Again, that's overt sometimes. Hillary Clinton said people who support BDS, that's anti-Semitism. So, but obviously those arguments are hack because... The argument isn't, oh my god, you single out Israel so much, that's unfair. Ask anybody who's in favor of this resolution, any liberal in the U.S. who's in favor of this resolution against Israel. Hey, should we also maybe um, do a resolution against Saudi Arabia because they say all atheists are terrorists and they treat women like second-class citizens and they behead people for apostasy and sorcery and drug smuggling? Every single one of them is like, yeah, yeah. Resolution against them too. Resolution against everybody who violates international law. So they try to make it seem like, oh, you're a hypocrite because you don't want to do resolutions against other states, just the Jews in Israel. No, I want to do them against all of them. But then again, dig deeper and call them out, and what will you find out? They are in favor of sanctions against Iran and Saudi and all these other countries, but not for Israel. Why? Because only democracy in the Middle East, liberal values. You can't, you keep screaming liberal values as a shield to do illiberal things. No, there's not a single liberal on the planet that's not going to give you, uh, you know, more credit for your domestic policy. Yes, you're much more free and much more open in your borders than Saudi Arabia or Iran. There's no denying that. You treat women better. You treat gays better. We get it and we agree with you. But that doesn't override, that doesn't give you a pass for what you're doing to the Palestinians. And you think it does. You think, well, look, liberal enough, democratic enough, therefore, if you single us out, if you say that we're violating international law, well, then you must be against the liberal values. No, we're against the illiberal things you do that you shield with liberal values. That's the term pinkwashing. Hey, we're so for gay rights that don't talk about it when we bomb Gaza and over 80% of the people dead are civilians. No, but we're on to your trick, dipshit. We know it's a trick. We know that when you say gay rights, liberal values, liberal values, and then you keep building illegal settlements and kicking Palestinians off their land, that ain't okay. You gotta do both. Care about liberal values, care about uh, gay rights, and care about Palestinians, and try to get a two-state deal. You don't want a two-state deal. So if you don't want it, I would force your ass into it. It's that simple. If we cut off your billions of dollars in aid, if we support BDS, if we sanction you, if we say, hey, we support a Palestinian state at the UN, we will force you to make a deal. Because it's very simple. You can make all the pain stop if you just do a deal. If you do a deal, we go back to giving you some aid. It's that simple. So, okay, billions of dollars you're not going to get. Well, do you really want those billions of dollars? Okay, then make a deal. 
Make a deal, and, it, and then you can have peace. And by the way, that's the other aspect and the other angle of this conversation, is that everybody who's for the resolution is being spun as anti-Israel. No, Netanyahu is anti-Israel because he's making it much less safe for the future. You keep on stealing Palestinian land. You keep on taking it. And then you go, oh, I can't believe there was a terror attack last week. I can't believe that there's a violent response when you try to take somebody's shit. Please, man, it's so obvious what you're doing. So you're putting the people in Israel in more danger. So maybe the people who are saying, hey, you got to stop violating international law. Maybe they're actually looking out for your best interest. But no, he's a, it's a rogue pariah state. And look how they're acting now. So they should be treated like apartheid South Africa until they get their fucking shit together and until they make a deal. And again, that's not to say other countries shouldn't be disciplined when they do bad things. I'm in favor of that. But stop deflecting and obfuscating the conversation by bringing up the other countries to shield Israel from criticism. Because they deserve every bit of the criticism. You got to get them to make a deal. And he wants to go down this path. He wants to snub his nose again at the UN. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You're just going to sit there and take it? Is that what you're going to do? A bunch of bitches if you sit there and take it. You got to do BDS. You got to side with BDS. You got to isolate them. They already started self-isolating. They started doing self-BDS. We're not going to do deals with countries that, that did this to us. <laughs> okay. Well, how about the rest of the countries that you want to keep relations with? How about they, they cut their ties with you? How about that? How about you don't have anybody to trade with anymore? Well, then what happens? A lot The rich people, the, the elites in Israel are going to go to the government. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe it's time to do a deal, motherfucker. I'm hemorrhaging money here. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? We can't, we can't trade with anybody now? This is exactly what happened in apartheid South Africa. When you isolate them and they're away from the world, well, then that affects everybody's wallet and you can't keep the economy going that way. So you're forced to make a deal. This is what you do. You don't let them take more land and then snub their nose at you. Don't be ridiculous.